Wendy Bagwell, years ago, he had gospel group, country gospel group, just a fantastic testimony for God. But he was, and this is a true story, he was playing in a country church up in the mountains, just a small country church, and they were, I'm sure they were doing an I'll fly away or something, just going to town, you know, and playing away. And as the service progressed, they come from the back room out with the snakes, you know, the holy snakes, you know, and danced around and stuff. Wendy leaned over to the pastor and said, where's your back door? <laughs> pastor said, we don't have a back door. Wendy said, reckon where do you want one? There you go. <laughs> have you ever had those times in your life where you're up against a closed door and you just kick and scream and holler and and you try to pry and push and do whatever you can to get that door open and it still won't open. Who's been there? Who's there now, I guess I should really, yeah, that's what I should really ask. So Lisa handed me a note years ago uh, and I found it in my files, which as you know, I'm trying to clean those out and transfer those electronically. but. She handed me a note which still affects me today when I read it, and it's in your in your insert there. Uh, and I believe we didn't know at the time, but I believe Alexander Graham Bell is where this originates from. Uh, but when a door closes, another door opens. But a lot of the time, we give so much of our attention to the closed door that we cannot see the other one that's been opened up for us. Uh, the the idea. And I've experienced this. I think a lot of you probably here have too. I've experienced this where all of a sudden you got this closed door and what do you do? You spend all your time at the closed door. Open up. And it's, or, or you know, poor pitiful me. The door's closed. I can't get through it anymore. And you spend all your time at this closed door and you don't even see the other door that God's opened for you. Because you're facing the closed door. And you spend all your time just trying to get this door open. It's not going to open, but you refuse to believe that. In fact, you even bargain and argue with God. God, why did you close this door? I want it open now. Yeah. And then what happens, I, I've spent so much time at the closed door that when I finally, when finally I got around to turn around to see the, the door that was open, what happened? Somebody else went through it. And it closed. But see, that brings up a principle where we think we're irreplaceable, don't we? Well, God opened the door for me. I, we could be, you know, someone could substitute for me, but I can't be replaced. You know, we think that about ourselves, but the fact is we can be replaced. And if God opens the door for us, it's only going to stay open for so long. And if we don't go through it, somebody else will. So what happens? I've been at this door for so long, I'm just so oh, poor pitiful me. And then when I finally do turn around, someone else went through my door, it closes. So I go over to this door and start whining and crying why it's locked and why it's closed. God, open the door. That's, that's, that's what we do. It's what we do with God. Now, the thing, the thing about the, the problem with this is, we are born into a culture, into a world that teaches us you need to follow through. You need to work through. You need to put on your big boy pants, pull up your boots, and knock down the door if it's closed. That's what we're taught from the very beginning. Well, we have a brand new, that's called self-reliance, by the way. We have a brand new reliance now. We're brand new creatures. We are born again from above, and we no longer rely on ourselves because we know where that took us. We know where that takes us. If We're not self-reliant anymore. We're reliant on the only true power that exists, which is God through Jesus Christ. So that changes how we deal with things now. We're not responsible. We always thought before we were born again, we always thought, well, I make my own doors. I make my own keys. I open, I close, I got it covered. Yeah, how would that go for you? <laughs> Not very well. Didn't go, but that's what we thought. The fact is we really only control one door. Just one door and that's the door to our heart. And one, at one time the Holy Spirit convicted us 
And what did we do? We opened that door. Yeah, the scripture, the scripture is in your bulletin, uh, where Jesus Christ plainly says, "I." am the door. If anyone comes through me, he will be saved. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. We no longer depend on ourselves. We depend on God. And so this concept that we need to work through, we need, like I say, put on our big boy pants or, and work through. What, what was the line from your weekend? Uh, suck it up, buttercup? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. yeah. You know, suck it up, buttercup. And, but, but the fact is, that's not the way things are anymore. We don't have to... We live by grace, not by works, right? Now, our works display the grace that's inside of us. But it's not the other... We don't work for grace. We work because of grace. Grace is the tool, is the, is the actual door for not sinning. It's amazing how that works. We think if we don't do anything wrong, then we can live in grace. But in actuality, if you live in grace, that's when you stop doing things wrong. Isn't that something, how God set that up? Because He's the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So here we are. We're brand new creatures. 2 Corinthians 5.17. We're new creatures. Uh, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. We no longer depend on ourselves. And, and that's a constant struggle. Brother Nick and I were talking about that before. It is a constant. It's a battle because we think we got it. Oh, I got it, God. You know, it's a constant battle. And here we are. Do not let yourself become disappointed by closed doors. If you could think about it, just last week, there were, you probably had several doors that closed on you. Just all of a sudden, boom. And, and here you are at the door, not wanting to go to the open one. You want to stay at the closed one. And that's what makes it so difficult for all of us because we all want to stay at that place where we think we're in control, where we can get that door back open. Open In Revelation 3, 7 through 8, Jesus speaks to the church uh, of Philadelphia. And, and uh, what he talks about there, if you'll look through the Bible, you'll see six or seven times that, that the Bible talks about Open doors, God opening doors, and even doors of opportunity is really specifically how it's described. But there's really only one time where he talks about shutting a door, uh, and that's what this Revelation 3, 7 through 8 talks about. Here's, he identifies himself there. These are the words of him who is holy and true. Uh, don't have my glasses on. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts... No one can open. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. When you're at a closed door and you cannot open it and nobody else can open it, God shut it. The only one who can open it is God. What God shuts, no one can open no one can open. That's how you know God shut the door. <laughs> Same way with God's open door. No one can shut it. Yeah. Yeah. What God opens, He plainly tells us, what God opens, nobody can shut. These are the, the primary identifying marks of these opportunities in your life. If that door is closed and nothing is getting it open, no matter what, God closed it. Turn around. Turn the other way and find that door that he's opened that nobody can shut. Yeah. Yeah. See, we can shut a lot of doors in our life. We know, we, as we walk up to opportunities, open doors in our lives, we know that we can shut them. We know that somebody else, the enemy can even shut them. We know that. But if God opened it, who's shutting it? Nobody. Nobody. That's one of the identifying marks of the opportunities in your life. And you know those doors. At least I hope you do. There's probably many of us here, many of us watching, that have been stuck at a closed door. You just will not leave that closed. God has shut the door, and you've spent way too much time trying to get that thing back open. And if you'll just turn away, if you'll just turn around, you will see a door so wide open that you could drive your 4 by 4 through it. Amen. If you just turn away from the closed door. If you just look away. Who am I speaking to? Myself, for one thing. Yeah, amen. 
It's there. It's so what we have to do then is realize the difference between God closing the door and opening a door and men or humanity or the enemy opening and closing doors. The only way you're going to find that out, uh, first of all, is knowing that only God can open, only God can shut and maintain those things. But two, the only way you're going to know is to get intimate with him and to read his word and understand that you can know his voice, you can know his leading, you can know his guiding because he wants to work in partnership with you. Amen. It's his voice, his leading, his will is not some big mystery floating out there somewhere that all of us are trying to discover. Understanding God's word uh, and being a part of his word yeah. and knowing that we are in partnership with him. And that's a hard concept for us to understand because we think that God wants to work independent of us, but God wants to work in us, with us, and through us. It's been that way from the very beginning. And, and if you look at the pattern, this is a pattern that, that, that I've identified that the Holy Spirit has given me, but if you look at the pattern of our development, it starts off with relationship, it goes to fellowship, and then, it, then to partnership. That's how we're developed. That's how we spiritually mature. We didn't have a relationship. We were cut off because of sin. Our relationship was restored when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our relationship with God through Jesus Christ is now restored. The next step then, of course, would be fellowship. Let's get to know each other. Let's get intimate. Let's hang out. Let's go on dates. Let's eat food together. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get to know each other. Fellowship, intimacy. Intimacy results in partnership. You work together and sometimes you're not even aware of it. You don't even know it. It's kind of like when Matt and Wendy finish each other's sentences. It's the same way with God. He wants you to finish his sentence. Relationship, fellowship, and then partnership. Understanding those concepts and those principles then takes you to the point where you can know this door is the door that God opened. And most, not all the time, but most of the time, it, like I said, it's so wide open. It's so clear. It's so obvious, especially to all those around you. We're the ones that kind of balk. Yeah, go through that door. Well, yeah, you're supposed to be a shepherd, a pastor. Go through that door. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody around you sees it but you. So, yeah, yeah the, 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 the marching band was really good last weekend, but everybody was out of step except my little Johnny. Oh. Yeah. Uh. That's how we think. Yep. We refuse to see. Well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm the one that's out of step. Uh, you know it's an open door because God confirms. Not only does he keep it open and nobody can shut it, but God confirms through his word, uh, through the spiritual uh, uh, guidelines that are available to you and the spiritual boost, the positivity of that experience. If it's an open door from God, it's going to make you grow spiritually. It's going to develop your fellowship and your partnership with him. It's not going to be the opposite. If it's the opposite, God didn't open that door. If it doesn't line up with biblical values, God did not open that door. No matter how much we try to justify it, how much, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There, if you're going to spend your time saying there's nothing wrong with something, there's probably something wrong with something. Yeah. <laughs> Me thinks thou dost protest too much. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. I think there might be something wrong with that. If it doesn't line up with biblical values, it doesn't line up with the Holy Spirit inside of you. Jesus said, my sheep kind of know, they, they kind of understand me. They, they, you know, they may know my voice if we have someone interpret it for them. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. Praise his name. So walk with confidence. You see that open door? You've tested it scripturally. You've got all this confirmation all around you. Look away from the closed door and walk through that wide open light shining. You don't know what's on the other side. Anything's possible. Door. Closed doors. Man, we get so bummed out about that, you know, because we really thought, we really thought that's the direction we were going. I mean, it was so obvious, you know. It's, it just, you know, it was so obvious. That's the way I'm supposed to go. Well, up to that point, it was. But then it's time for a new direction. It's time for a new door. 
And we always want to dictate to God how things go. But, but I can tell you plainly that if you'll ask God to show you what he's doing, do not spend your time, all your efforts, fasting and praying and, and mourning and, and, and see, reading and studying about God's will for your life. Don't do that. Ask God to show you what he is already doing in your life and then ask him to allow you to participate in it. Amen. He will open the door. He will open the door. That's when you walk through. What's your will, Lord? Well, Scripture plainly says his will is to praise him. It's to lift him up. That's his will for you in Christ Jesus, to praise him. If you'll do that, He'll open the door. Lord, show me what you're already doing. Because as Terry will testify, the moment we think that God's not working is when he's working the most. Amen. The, the, when Jesus was on the cross saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The greatest work in the history of the universe was taking place. Even though it seemed like nothing was happening. The greatest work in the history of the universe. Praise his holy name. So don't ask him well, what's your will. Ask him to tell you what he's already doing. Then participate in that. That door will open wide. And listen, what, well, Pastor Jared, what about waiting on the Lord? Doesn't scripture tell us to wait on him? And we get this you know, vision where, okay, I'm just going to wait. But in reality, waiting on the Lord is like a waiter or waitress in a restaurant. Waiting on the Lord is active. It's not passive. Waiting on the Lord is, how may I help you? Is there anything else I can get for you? Can I take your order? That's waiting on the Lord. Actively. Actively. And if you'll be active in anything, not just passively sit and wait. Oh, I'm not led to do that. I'm not led to do that. I'm not. You are led to praise and to serve in whatever capacity is available. If you'll do that, then you'll see where you're supposed to go. The door will open wide. It's like it's like a boat in a rudder sitting on the on the water. Uh, if that boat is sitting still, you can't steer it. It's not. You, you can mess with that thing all you want. It's not gonna go. It's not going to guide anywhere, but once that boat is moving, then you can steer it with that rudder and it's going to go in the direction that you want it to go. It's the same way with us when we serve God. If we will just move, if we will just maybe empty the trash cans at church, if we will just maybe show up and then uh, uh, fill up some boxes for a ministry, if we'll just answer the call to, to maybe greet at the back door or the front door, then God's going to show you what direction to take because you are actively in service. You are Waiting on the Lord. Mm, we thank Him for these opportunities that He brings our way because without them, without them, where would we be? Where would you be? You know, you think about your life just a few short years ago. Uh, even those of you who've been going to church most of your life, think about the changes that have taken place. God has opened some wide doors of opportunity for effectual service, as Paul states it. And there's been some wonderful things happen on his behalf for your benefit. Where did we go with this thing? Henry Blackaby wrote in Experiencing God on page 159. When you begin to follow God and circumstances seem to close doors of opportunity, go back to the Lord and clarify what God said. God does not get angry if you ask him, what did you say? To clarify it. You heard him speaking. You just might have had too much noise. You might have had the gospel music turned up so loud you didn't hear him clearly. There you go. Yeah. You know, you might have been praising so loud you just, well, what'd you say again? He doesn't get mad about that. Ask him to clarify that because what you'll find out is he most often is not calling you to a task, but to a relationship. To a relationship. Through that relationship, he is going to do something through your life. Why is that? Think of it. Even in the natural world, this principle and this guideline applies. You get that, you get that promotion at work. Yeah, you did your task, but it's mostly through relationship. You, know, you always hear being at the right place at the right time. Or in our culture, it's who you know. You didn't get promoted by some vague entity. You got promoted by somebody you know. Usually, it's through a relationship. So, 
while we are task oriented, God wants us to be relational in everything that we do. Why do you think he said these two commandments supersede everything else and fulfill everything else? It's relational. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, everything that you are, and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. It's not a task. Although a task is displayed, it's relational. It's relational. And that's the opportunities that God's going to bring your way most of the time. Most, as soon as you walk through that wide open door where all the light is, there's going to be somebody sitting there that needs to hear about Jesus. <laughs> needs to hear your story. How'd you get through that door? How'd you make it this far in your life? There's going to be somebody that only you can relate to. Stay active. Be active. Continue moving on. Don't just wait passively. Actively respond. Stop focusing on the door that God has closed and walk through the door that He's opened.